All right. Hey. So I don't want guys hey. what, uh, watching right now on Facebook, I want to show you something. Do you do you remember these things? Do you remember these? It's called a tape. Hold on. It's called a cassette tape. And this is out of my personal collection, right. hey, my personal comedy collection uh, uh, from way back in the day. It's you. the Willie Farrell Get in the Trunk <laughs> cassette tape. Holy cow. I've got, and this is side one and side two. And I've got Willie on the phone with me right now, joining us for a very special 420 report here on January 10th. It's 4:20 p.m. This is your good pal, Jared Dog. Hey, Willie, what's up, man? You know, it's funny, Jared Dog, that you should say that. That 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 was taped at the Funny Bone in Des Moines, and it was me and and they taped another act, a guy named Mark Gross. And uh, if you don't know who Mark Gross is, I'll tell you who he is now. He is the uh, executive producer of Man with a Plan. Uh, he was uh, the head writer and, and executive producer of Mike and Molly. Uh, he he's went on to do. I mean, he's a big shot now in uh, out, out in L.A. as a as a, a producer. Now it, um, he's the Bart Simpson looking dude, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, so well, I, he taped. Uh, we, we did uh, two sets that night. He taped his show, and I did mine. And I see that's with Laughing Hyena Records out of Las Vegas. Yeah, so, I, yeah. That guy uh, Arnie Huffman, I believe, is his name. As a matter of fact, if you if, if you if you still got the cover of the. Uh, CD, it's a, it's, a, it's a cool cover. It's me standing there, and then they uh, photoshopped a, a car with a, a guy in the trunk and a big bodybuilder guy throwing him in the trunk, and the guy in the trunk was Arnie. And uh, it was uh, it was uh, funny because Arnie used to do a lot of them. I mean, that's how Jeff Foxworthy and all those guys, they started with uh, Laughing Hyena. You know, that's and that's the company that put out a CD for me, too. It's called Domesticated Pony yeah. Animal. Yeah. And uh, no, he, he's big and sell them at it, truck it, stops. It, 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 they would call. They they didn't really. Uh, I mean, they they didn't put much into it. I mean, besides filming it, because uh, at the start when it says uh, "Laughing Hyena presents Willie Pearl, that's my wife talking. I mean, so, so they use they use my wife on it. <laughs> that's great. And then they at the her. very end, they do they sort of wrap it up. You go, hey, good night, everybody. I'm Willie Farrell. Good night. And then the laughter sort of dies out and fades out. And then you hear the narrator come on the who introduces. She goes, yeah. she repeats your line. Aha, say something Italian. Get in the trunk. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's my old lady. Hey guys, we got Andy Hartley joining in. We got Mickey, Alan, Amanda, Trisha, Lynn, Cliff, Joe. Hey guys, thank you much. Uh, thank you very much for joining in. Hit the share button. Do us a favor because I've got comedy legend, a thirty-five plus year veteran of the stage, oh, on with the on the phone with me right now, Willie Farrell. And the reason why I'm bringing him on, it's not just for my health. It's not just for his health. It is to announce the show that we've got promoted coming up this Friday night in Grettinger, Iowa. Willie will be graciously headlining the Grassroots Comedy Tour up there at Birdie's Burgers and Brews, located inside the Hillcrest Country Club. Dude, we worked together last Sunday in, well, first of all, it's yeah. 420. It's hump day happy hour. Every Wednesday, I do this. I got a drink in my hand. I made myself a white really? Russian. You got a drink in your hand? Well, no, here, I'm gonna go. Let me go to my bar. I have a nice little bar here. Let's see what I'll do. I got uh, doers. Maybe no. You know what? Maybe I'll do. Uh, I think I'll do a little single malt, a little Glen Levitt or something. Straight up, it's easy to do. There you go. You're Scotch. Straight out of the bottle. Straight out of the yeah. bottle. No, I got. I got my little glass with my name on it. Look, got a big F on there. Class of sucker. I got my. Here's the funny thing, your dog. I'm trying to talk to you right now. Mm -hmm. I have this little dog. I have this little Pomeranian. Uh, he's a little orange Pomeranian named Cheeto Taquito. And uh, he, he, all he wants to do is play catch. So while I'm trying to do all this, he keeps bringing me a tennis ball. So <laughs> every once in a while, if you hear me grunting, that's because I'm bending over to try to pick it up and throw it for him. But, um, See, that's how, hey, well, I got that's my how versatile Willie really Farrell really. is. He can play catch with the dog, mix up a whiskey, and do a Facebook Live yeah. broadcast with me at the same time. All right. I got my drink. I'm not a whiskey man. Maybe that's something I should learn. I don't even know what a good whiskey would be. I thought about doing that because I knew that you'd be calling in today and we'd be doing this together. Yeah. I thought about doing a whiskey, no, but I don't even know what yeah, a good one would be. I, they do scotch or whiskey. Yeah. Scotch or whiskey. Think? Well, I've, I'm drinking right now. I got a white Russian, and I've got to get through two of them because I've still got a little bit of cream left here, and the expiration date is today. So I'm going to make two of these while we're on the oh, phone together. Russian. 
I, you know what? I, you know, I'm, I'm a, I've been a major alcoholic for probably 40 years. I don't think I've ever drank a white Russian. It's pretty What's tasty, kinda? and you, but you don't want to go. It's a uh, vodka, Kahlua, yeah, and uh, you can either do milk or cream or half and half or something like that. Oh, see that, that to me that's too much. That's too much going on. I, I with me it's <laughs> the scotch, uh, maybe with a few ice cubes or, or maybe neat, just straight up. As you get older, you don't want you, you don't want to play games with your liver. You know what I mean? But just you, you, as long as you're bringing the same thing through the liver, the liver you get lost. So with me, it's always. <laughs> I drink two things in my life. I drink scotch, and I drink a lot of water. I drink a lot of water. I wake up every morning. Here's my thing. It's 61. Here, here's, here's my health program. And I don't think I look too bad for 61. <laughs> but I wake up every morning. I, I drink. I, I, I take my blood pressure pill and my cholesterol pill. But I take those, and I drink. I got a, I got a big purple cup, 32-ounce cup. I fill it to the top with water. As my daughter calls it, I drink sink water. It's right out of the tap. Right. And uh, I, I do that every morning. I drink a 32-ounce cup of, uh, of water, and then I, I do 100 push-ups. No kidding. Start every day. 100 in a row, or do you do, like, different – you just go 100 straight up uh, in a row? I, I, I can do 100 in a row. I can do 100, I can do 100 in a row uh, with the, the diamond, you know, where you put your, your hands together as the diamond. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I can do but – but lately I've been doing – I do 50, 50, or, you know, I'll do three, uh, 425s, or, or sometimes I'm feeling good, I'll just do 100, but uh, – I always make sure I do 100 every day. And I've been doing it. You know, we had a, I, my wife and I had a little party a while back because I, I finally figured out I've done over a million push-ups in my life. Nice. Health, yeah, yeah, health conscious. You don't see that very I, I, often I, I, in a road I, I, comic I, I, these I days. I thought I was going to end up in prison. So I thought, you know, I better, better get a head start. But uh, I never ended up in prison. So <laughs> push-ups. Hey, how long have you been doing the 100 push-up push ritual? Um. Probably since I've been 15, 16 years old. Oh, right on. Yeah, so, so, uh, so 40 some years, 45 years maybe, 45, 46 years. That's smart too. That's something I wish I would have started way back in the day. When I first started going on the road, I didn't quite realize yeah. what I was in for, where you are going to drink a lot and you do need to do something to take care of your liver because I'll tell you, dude, I drink a lot and 80% of what I yeah. drink, it's not, I don't even buy it. Other people are buying it mm -hmm. for me. Like, oh, Jared, oh, oh, you got to no, drink the garbage yeah. can shot. And especially the joints you do. I mean, you do them places where they party like motherfuckers. So, I mean, yeah. You're going to get some drinks put in you. For sure. So you got to learn to take care yeah. of yourself. That's something I yeah. wish I would have started out years ago when I first went on the road with some sort of morning exercise regimen. I waited till I was 40, damn near fucking falling apart. And now I do a similar yeah. thing. I don't do the 100 push-ups. I do push-ups as part of like a weekly – um, yeah, we're working out with weights. But what I do every morning is I sure. try to do at least a one hour walk, four or five miles at a time. Perfect. That's not, I, you know, I, I try to walk too. That's a big thing. That's why I like walking, uh, work in Vegas because in Vegas you can walk up and down the strip, you know, and you don't get bored because you're seeing stuff all the time. Uh, absolutely. Something happened to me a while back though. I was, um, I was doing a corporate show, uh, with the guy I thought was a comedy. We were in Dallas, Texas. And, uh, we, they put us in this Four Seasons Hotel, that was, which was unbelievable. It was like my room was actually uh, uh, on a golf course, like a, it was like a little a little suite on a golf course. So we get done doing the show, all us guys, we all go to our own suites. Now I'm in this suite. It's got I got the bar in there. I got the food. I got everything. I got a robe. So I'm just at this point, you know, it's one of it, one of those great gigs. You know, every once in a while you get that great gig, and you're thinking, man, I can do this every day. Oh, for sure. So I'm in there with the robe on. I got the single malt. I got the TV on, I'm drinking, I'm eating chicken wings. I, I, now, next thing you know, I'm drunker and shit. And <laughs> I, I'm laying on the bed, I got the chicken wing juice on my chest. Little tiny mini bottles are all over the, the bed. I'm watching TV, and I see a guy doing these exercises. And he's telling you, you can tell if you're in good shape if you can do certain exercises. Okay. So the guy says, you know, you should be able to do this many push-ups. So I'm drunk. I, I could do these push -ups. I get down, I do the push-ups. And he says, you got to be able to do this. And you got So the whole time I'm thinking, I could do all this shit. So... Finally, the, he does this one where he says, you get up against the wall with your back to the wall on your head, like a head a handstand, like a headstand on the wall. Yeah, yeah. And then you push up, you push up so your legs go straight toward the ceiling, and, and, and that's like you, that's like a uh, really tough exercise. And I'm like, well, fuck, I could do that. So I go up against the wall. I got my robe. My robe's over my head. I got <laughs> the, the, the barbecue sauce all over my chest. I do one. I go down. I go to do a second one. My arms give away. I crash down on my head. I, I, I knocked myself out. 
So <laughs> I, wake up, I wake up, I don't know, 10 minutes later, and I don't, I don't know what the hell happened to me. I'm not messed up like crazy. So I, 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 no more of that. So. Yeah, dude, and at your age, you can't be doing those handstand push-ups. Oh. I think if you're knocking oh, out 100 no, I... a day already at the age of 61, you're fucking ahead of the game, yeah. bro. Yeah, it was the liquor. The liquor was talking to me. <laughs> you turn into Superman when you start pounding those yeah. shots, dude. You're damn right. Now, Willie does a lot of shows. He spends most of his time out in Vegas and Atlantic City these days, but graciously yeah. will be making a special appearance up in Grettinger, Iowa, which is our stomping grounds, dude. We're both based out of right here I'm, in central Iowa, and you're going to have a great fucking time. To it. I got Barry Bonner. He just joined in, and he's the guy that runs that place. It's Birdies, Burgers, and Brews. Yeah. And Barry, if you're still watching, do me a favor and hit the share button so that way more of your fans and friends and followers out there in that area will hear what's going on because I've got comedy legend Willie Farrell on the fucking phone with me right now. Dude, hanging out at Whiskey House with you last week was so fun. I love. I always like watching you do shows, but I really like your story, your origin story of how you came up in the business, how you got started yeah. at Ingersoll Dinner Theater in Des Moines. Would you mind sharing that with us real quick? Not at all. Not at all. It was uh, it was one of those deals that as a kid, I hung around down on the south side of Des Moines over Columbus Park. All the Italian kids, all the young Italian kids, we all hung out there. We played basketball every night. Some of them smoked dope. Some of them drank. But we would sit around, tell stories and laugh and joke and have a good time. 1980 comes around. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm in my, you know, my 20s. And, uh, but we're down there talking and everything, and when somebody says, hey, they're going to have a, a, a comedy night at the uh, Ingersoll Dinner Theater, you ought to try it. We'll come watch it. It'll be a lot of fun. I said, oh, yeah, okay. So it's like a Monday night, and I'm thinking, well, there ain't going to be nobody there. This will be all right. I don't mind goofing with all our stuff. So I get there. The place is jam-packed. There's like 400 people there. It's, I mean, it's off the wall. So I go to my buddies. I go, I find them, and I say, I ain't doing this. This is crazy. And they're like, well, you know, we all pay cover charge. you got to pay us all back. And I thought that. <laughs> so... But the funny thing was, your dog, is that I was like the fourth or fifth act, and before me there was a guy in the audience, and he was heckling everybody. Now, this is 1980. No one really knew how to handle this. No one knew. I mean, cause they, they put on the show, but there wasn't any bouncers. There wasn't anybody yeah. with the protocol or, or, or even what you're supposed to be doing at these kind of shows. So no one's talking to this guy. And this guy, just everybody that gets up, he's interrupting their act. He's saying stuff and, and just throwing everybody off. Right. So finally, it comes my turn to get up there, and I get up there, and uh, as a matter of fact, this is on film someplace. Somebody has actually got this because uh, a Channel Eight, uh, KCCI, filmed it. And uh, I get up on stage, and I'm starting to talk, and this guy starts to heckle me, and I go into full, full young Dago from the South Side mode, and uh, <laughs> I just go after this guy, and I just, I mean, I just light him up, and the crowd goes insane. And uh, so I, I do my 10 minutes or whatever. I, I got my cockroach material and all that. I'm doing all that. And right. It goes great. Next day, this is back when the paper used to cover shit. Next day, there's a big article in the paper by up-and-coming comedian Willie Farrell. And it said he has the uh, comedy uh, uh, stylings of Freddie Prince with the uh, handsome good looks of Tony Danza. <laughs> so, uh, you know. How can, I, how can you go wrong there? Hey, who's the boss? <laughs> that's right. You got damn right. That that's a good review. That's a really good um, up and coming yeah. story because a lot a lot of comedians have that first time story, especially guys these days. It's like they got their start at some dive yeah. bar open mic where there were maybe ten people in the crowd. Eight of them were comedians. Yeah. And when you got started in the, in nineteen eighty, like nineteen eighty, oh, yeah. that's when comedy was just starting to come up on that big upswing to the boom through the eighties. And then when I got started, it was crashing yeah. a horrible oh, fucking sure. painful death. Yeah, yeah. And you were one of the first ones to encourage me. Every all the other comics were like, yeah. dude, get it. I was just doing it for fun, man. I was just doing it for fun. I didn't think about doing this shit to ever make a living at it. But I worked with you at Central College in Pell. I didn't work with you. Fucking where were you? I was like a student that begged the activities director yeah. to let me get on stage in front of the comic I was coming in. And, I, you know, I was a young and dumb kid. I'd never heard of Willie Farrell before, but I did like mm -hmm. five or ten minutes in front of you, and then I sat down, I watched you, you worked the crowd like you normally do, and then you're like, you go, dude, you want to do this? You want to do this? You go, you got a goofy look. You'll be fine. <laughs> And you know what? I, I still love your look. I, every time I look at you, it, I, 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 it's, in my mind, it's like, you worked on my transmission someplace. <laughs> it looks like, I've seen this guy in the garage before. He's that guy that knows a lot about cars or something, you know? 
I'll tell you, I, you know, I watched you the other night, and I watched you the, the last time we were together, and uh, I, I'll give you the best compliment I can give anybody in this, that when, you, when I watch you, you remind me of nobody. You remind <laughs> me of you. And, I mean, that's the best thing I can say. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I, I mean, it, everybody borrows when they start this business. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it takes you a few years to find your voice. And when I watch you, it's, I, I, I hear you. And, and that's, the, that's the best thing I can say is that, you know, you're just, uh, you're steady, man. You're really good. I, and I think, it's all those, uh, I think it's all those shows you do in the bars and stuff because uh, you're a warrior. I watch you and I'm thinking to myself, I could watch this guy with a thousand people and he would rock and I could watch him with two people and he's still going to deliver the same thing. The same energy, the same, you know, and, and that, that, you, you got it. You got the goods. Oh, thanks, Willie, man. And that's a huge compliment and very humbling to hear, especially from someone like you, because you might not know it, but I've actually emulated your style for a long time in the sense that it's rapid-fire delivery, rapid-fire punchlines. It's something you don't see with comedy these days. It's kind of an old-school approach. I was talking to, about this to Larry Reeb a couple weeks ago when I worked with him. Yeah. You don't see the setup, punchline, quick, quick, quick laugh format so much anymore so i like to combine that but i also like to combine it with the spontaneous style of working with whatever yeah. the dynamics that the crowd gives you so along the lines of being able to work a crowd there's only 12 people in the crowd or a thousand people mm -hmm. in the crowd you can go both ways because all those tools are available to you to use and then every show is completely fucking different it's not just a standard yeah. routine that you're reciting that's something i emulated from you well, let's be honest. You know what? Let's. I, I, I'm I'm easily bored kind of guy. I mean, I, there were times in my career that I would go on a long run and I'd say, okay, I'll just do my 45 minutes set. And by the third day of row, you know, I'm it's driving me nuts. Yeah, yeah. So it was like I got to keep. I got. I mean, I have to entertain these people, but the only way I'm going to entertain them good is if I, I look like I'm having fun and I'm entertaining. I have to entertain myself too. Right. And and that's that's part. Of, you know, it's funny. I used to own a lot with Richard Pryor, and. Uh, you know, you, you would hear his stuff, but every once in a while you would find a recording of him doing a, a set uh, of maybe Mudbone or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, 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 he would switch it up a little bit, you know? You know, it's like Sinatra. When Sinatra sings a song, he never sang it the same way twice because the circumstance wasn't the same way twice. And I think with stand-up comedy, I mean, unless you've got a bit that's like a Seinfeld that you, 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 you edit it down and you need every word to be exactly right, right. you know, that, that's the thing. But I, I think with comedy sometimes, you're telling the story, you know, I, I say you got to... You got to fit it to what uh, what's around you at the time, what the circumstances are. Well, I think that's what's yeah. made you so popular over the years is that you're very relatable, and you know you are off the cuff and you're spontaneous, and that definitely reads to the crowd, even when you're doing material. So, like I showed your tape at the beginning of this video, I showed off your tape, and for those of you who might have missed it, I was going to grab it here, but I just spilled my white Russian. Uh, but I showed off your tape. Some of these. Some of the jokes on here, like we, you might still yeah. do today, but when you do them, it comes off as completely spontaneous and in the moment. You don't even think, oh, that's standard Willie Farrell material. You know, when I yeah. go around and I do the shows, like that's what I want people to really kind of imagine, that sure. every bit of this is just coming off the top of my head free form. Even if yeah. it's a joke that I've told verbatim for the last 20 years, I still want that to sound I'm fresh and original and in the moment. That that is part. That is part of what's being a stand-up comedy, a, a comic. It, it really is. Is that? Uh, I mean, trying to make that stuff that you said a thousand times, trying to make it sound fresh every time you say it. It's, it's not as easy as it sounds. You know that. I mean, I, I'm always amazed at people that uh, that do Broadway or, or, or uh, Johnny Bush. Johnny Bush he did Triple Expresso. He's done over three thousand shows. Mm -hmm. And I said, Oh my God! I mean, you've uttered the same line, whatever it was, three thousand times. You know. And, and and that's and that's part of being a professional is just trying to keep it always keep it fresh, always keep it like hey this is the first time I said it too. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and that I think that's a challenge for a lot of guys. Another challenge for a lot of guys that I've noticed is the hanging out afterwards. I think this is what makes you so yeah. good at that. Is you know, like the other night we're leaving the whiskey house, 
And I'm like, shit, man, I'm usually the last motherfucker up in here hanging <laughs> till the bitter end. And I'm on my way out, and here's Willie Farrell holding court at the bar with three or four other dudes. Like, you're there till every fucking person the venue leaves. I don't know if that's what you do at most shows. That's something that I try to do at a lot of shows. And I think it's important, you know, the, the uh, being yeah, personal. You have to be appreciative of what. I mean, you really do. You really got to be appreciative. I mean, a uh, Sunday night and uh, – you know, freezing cold, Ankeny, Iowa. Anybody comes out to watch me, I mean, you know, thank you, thank you very much for coming. And the same thing with, com you know, and, you know, I, I, don't get me wrong. I mean, there, there's a lot of comics I, I don't spend a lot of time with, but the ones that I truly find funny, I'm I'm going to sit and talk to because I can learn something from them as much as they can learn something from me. Yeah, I agree. Um, it was, it's you know, and I could sit here and chat with you all night long about comedy. Yeah. We've, we've already been going out at 20 minutes. I think we've barely scratched the surface. Um, and people oh, yeah, are getting a lot of good comments here, too, on the Facebook, which is really cool. Yeah. Andy so Hartley we're asked, we're do you do push-ups before or after the scotch? <laughs> <laughs> uh, before or after, anytime. Scotch always goes in good. Scotch. <laughs> um, otherwise, we, you know, uh, I'm trying to look for some good questions here. We just got a lot of people saying, Jared, oh, hey, I love Willie. A lot of good compliments here, man. Well, that's cool. Hey, dude, you're going to have a great time this Friday night. It's, uh, it. it's this Friday, January 12th in Grettinger, Iowa. It's at the Country Club, Hillcrest Country Club in Grettinger. Uh, Birdies, Burgers, and Brews, part of the Grassroots Comedy Tour. They're probably going to be sold out, so you're going to have a lot of fun. And earlier I put cool. out on Facebook. Here's something that I get all the time, dude, because like I said earlier, uh, I emulate a lot of your style as far as quick and fast punch lines. Like you said earlier, I look like the kind of guy that might have worked on your transmission earlier in the day. So I, I try to appeal to a blue-collar, working-class audience. And I feel like the best stuff is the spontaneous, in-the-moment, uh, you know, riffing with the crowd type of material. And whenever I do that, though, there will always be, like every other show, somebody will come up to me afterwards and go, oh, I could tell you ran out of material when you started oh. going into the crowd on such and such. And I'm like, no, motherfucker. I had like two hours no. left in the bank. I could have gone into any bit. But what do you th – do you get that a lot? I, not, not really. I mean, because I, I think I, I've gotten to the point where that's kind of my reputation for that's what I'm going to do. Um, I, so I, I don't get too many people doing that, but you know, it, it, I, I, the best, the best answer you can give them was, you know, did you laugh? Were you still having fun? Well, then, then there's, that's a bonus. Then I gave you more than you deserved. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, to me, there's, I mean, nothing's better than having a good joke that's written and it goes over well, but nothing's, nothing's better than when you actually find some comedy gold out of nothing. When you come up with something that wasn't there before, you know what I mean? You actually actually created some new comedy that's that's fun yeah i agree so, that's the most fulfilling but, part uh, of it for me i mean as you, well. you get, i mean my thing is i i do a lot of the uh the corporate work you know they're, they're a little bit nicer so they wouldn't i i i, I appreciate what you do so much because i started off i mean i was in the bar scene i mean that's you know that's it, it's like uh it's like well rocky when he first started fighting before he fought <laughs> apollo creed and he had to you know he was doing the uh the bar fights i mean you know guys are biting his ear and punching them in the, in the nuts and shit. That's what you've got to deal with sometimes. And the fact that you, you know, you're undefeated in that, that that's great. I, I think, you know, I mean, but you're, but you're going to get those kind of guys that will probably say shit to you all the time like that. Yeah, I, well, I've definitely been knocked out a time or two, dude, man. You know, I've, I've died horrible, horrible, horrible fucking deaths on stage. But that's part of toughening oh, up well, as well, you know. I think you got to get knocked out to be a good fighter. I I got to tell you, you know, you talk about uh, uh, horrible. I, I don't have too many horrible bar stories I can remember, but I, I'll tell you a, a couple of horrible uh, corporate stories. I, I did a show, Your Dog, one time, giant show, was five, 600 people in this big place. They got me on a stage. Uh, the people are all sitting. Anyway, uh, before the show, they got the projector going where they're showing slides of, like, picnics and last uh, Christmas and uh, employees and all this great stuff, and they're just showing all these things. So finally... I'm on the wings waiting. The guy's up there getting ready to introduce me. And the last picture that comes up on the slide is this old lady. You can see her. She's leaning over her desk. She's got the <laughs> bun. She's got the hair. She's kind of smiling. And at the bottom, you can see it's Ethel 1913 to 2010. She's dead. You know, that's what happened. She was the secretary, and she's gone now. So Right there in the middle of your set? Says, right, no, this is right before I'm ready to go on. 
And he's like, well, before, before we start here, I just want to everybody, everybody remembers Ethel. And she was a wonderful woman. She was with the company from the start. We're going to miss her. You know, the way she used to answer the phone. And I remember she'd give everybody cookies on Sunday, you know, Fridays. And blah, blah, blah. He's just blubbering. Before he goes, no, here's the comedian Willie Farrell. So I got to walk on stage. Now, here's the worst part. George, that's not the worst part. The worst part is I have to go in the middle of the stage. Nobody turned off the projector. So <laughs> Ethel is on me. She's on me. I'm, I'm, I'm standing there with her projected on me. I look down by my belt, and it's got, like, Ethel right there. It's got, like, her name. And, you know. Oh. And you can't tell them to turn off the projector. That's basically like saying forget Ethel. So I had to do about a minute and a half until somebody finally realized, oh, shit, get this thing off. <laughs> it was horrible. Hey, Willie, how'd you do at the show last week? I killed. <laughs> yeah, apparently Ethel, yeah. <laughs> and then I did another show one time where, you know, a lot of times I do these corporates and I'll ask, ask people beforehand, I'll say, give me some info on some of these people who have some fun. And they'll come up and give me a list before the thing, and that's great. It gets you started right off the bat. I mean, you get, I mean, a lot of times I'll take a list, have it in my hand, and go, hey, where's Jimmy at? Jimmy says here you're a Hawk fan, and everybody, ah, they get Jimmy. It makes yeah, yeah. it so, so much easier. So I got this list. I'm getting ready to do the show. It's at the Latin King. They, they, they uh, close it up. I'm in one of the rooms. So I got the list, and, and I'm getting ready. I'm looking at the list. And right before I go on, this drunken secretary comes up and says, ask about Bob and Sharon. Ask about Bob and Sharon. So I scribble at the bottom, Bob and Sharon. Okay, that'll be the end. So I get out there, and I start off, and I'm killing your dog. I mean, it was one of them ones where it, it didn't even have to say anything. I was just like, uh, where's where's Chuckle? Ah, he's cracking up my day, Chuckle. Said here, you blah, 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 and everything. Oh, I'm killing. Now I, I'm looking at my watch. I'm at 52 minutes. I got like 30 minutes to burn. I thought, oh, okay, I'll throw the last one in. I said, okay, hey, uh, where's uh, Bob and Sharon? What about Bob and Sharon? This woman jumps up, screaming, crying, runs out of the room. I look over at the guy. The guy just puts his head on his desk and just shaking his head with his head on, on, on the table. They were having an affair. And uh, it was supposed to not know, but everybody knew. Was no. Marriages. And, oh, my God. So now, now I'm spending the next five minutes going, hey, I'm not fucking Kreskin. I didn't know who these people were. It was written on this piece of paper. You know? Right. But yeah, it was. It, it, it went from a great show to, but I've learned the lesson. The lesson is the drunken secretary gives you something to say. Don't say it. <laughs> Keep her out. Because they're probably thinking that, like, maybe you did research and that you thought it'd be hilarious yeah. to bring up this exactly. soap opera affair that was going on. Yeah. The, the great thing was after the show, the president of the company came up. So let me buy you a drink. I know that didn't come from you. <laughs> he, he, you know, he figured it out. But yeah, oh yeah, it was so. That is my a scary. great story, man. So guys, hey, we had we've been going on for almost thirty minutes now. Willie is going to be playing in Grenger, Iowa, this Friday night at the the Grassroots Comedy Tour. That's going to be held at Birdie's Burgers and Brews inside the Hillcrest Country Club, Grettinger, Iowa. I'll put all the links for the show information and the way that you can get tickets, and I'll, I'll uh, hit you hey, up with a share friend request there, with I'll Barry Bond. What's the best way to your dog? The best way up there really is yeah. probably up 30, I-35 I straight from Des Moines and then yeah. cutting over on whatever that highway is that goes through Algona. You'll go straight to Spencer, Iowa, and then up into there. It's, yeah. you know, back roads to the middle of cornfields until you get there. You're a true grassroots okay. comedy tour warrior in the sense that I am as well. But you also get to do those fucking casinos and high-class gigs out in yeah. Vegas and Atlantic City. It's versatile, dude. Yeah. This is what I like about you is Willie Farrell yeah. brings rock star attitude, a rock star persona, but without the pretension. He'll hang. He'll talk to everybody. He's super appreciative. He'll tell you stories till the fucking bitter end. I witnessed that personally last Sunday at the Whiskey House in in um, Ankeny, which 22 people in the crowd on a yeah. Sunday night when it's bitter fucking cold. I consider that a victory, quite frankly, in Ankeny, yeah. Iowa. But and they all pay, too. So there you go. Yeah. And they all paid, and they were all into it yeah. from the very fucking start. And shout out to yeah. Boyles and James and everybody out there out at the Whiskey yeah. House for doing that. Um, but I do like it, man. Like, what for you, you came up in the mid-'80s or in the early-'80s up yeah. through the mid-'80s. Comedy was at the, an all-time fucking peak. From what I understand, they were yeah. giving MCs, like, sitcom roles. 
and then you go oh. into the 90s it fucking crashes out but and you're back you you've been through it all dude like through everything yeah. and you, you do the big gigs you do the small town gigs you do everything like you know i can't suck up enough to that fact because it's something that like i said i try to role model myself after but for you like what are some of the biggest differences coming up in the 80s this will be the last thing and then oh, we'll, we'll wrap it up mo money alone for, well first of all it's funny every once in a while i get like uh, I'll get Andy Hartley or, or, or Josh Nobe come with me on the road, and, and uh, I'll, I'll talk to him about, like, we'll get in the car, we'll get ready to go. And I said, let me tell you something, pal. I said, back in the day, let's say I had a gig. Let's say I had a gig down in Kentucky. Well, I called that guy on the phone, the land fucking line phone, and said, I will be there. How, where, where do you got to go? And he would tell me. Then I would get out my Rand McNally, and I would grace it on my Rand McNally. Then I would jump in the car, and then I would just take off. And God, if I had to get a hold of this guy, God, hopefully I could find a gas station open, and I hope I had a quarter where I could make a phone call. To find, you know what I mean? It was like, and these guys were like, you were like a, you know, uh, what do you call Lucy Quark? And right. I basically was. I mean, to get any place, think about it now. You would never even leave the house without your phone, let alone GPS and everything else. No shit. You know? so no shit. Back then, it was, yeah, it was a crapshoot. It's amazing we found half the places we found. You know what I mean? Just by looking up that little map, and and and, and this is back when. I used to travel a lot. I used to work for uh, this, uh, the Comedy Zones and all that down in uh, uh, southeastern uh, uh, country, you know, like uh, Georgia and, and Alabama. And, and, and I mean, and you would just drive everywhere. But the only good thing about that was you had one-nighters every night. And when I'm saying one, every night, I mean, you could work, and I'm not kidding you, you could work two months in a row and not take a day off and work every night. But and here's the bad part that will make you sad. Yeah. Back then, a one-nighter paid. 250 back then back in 85 right what's the one nighter pay now about the same or <laughs> less yeah yeah now imagine what 250 was like back then and most of the time you got paid in cash or if you wanted to take it in coke or if you wanted to take it well, my, <laughs> you could take it all different ways i always took the cash but uh yeah you would be driving around by the by the third week you got a bankroll you look like a, you know you you were like a coke dealer but uh that was the, that was the big deal. I mean, I remember the Funny Bone back in the day, back in the eighties. I mean, a, a Funny Bone headliner could make thirty five hundred a week. A lot of times they would pick up your flight, and a lot of times they would have a rental car for you. Right, That's full on rock star treatment. I mean, the money. You know, it, it's so sad that that it, it, when movies back in the eighties, movies were like six dollars to get in. Now movies are fifteen dollars to get in. Mm. Comedy clubs were six dollars to get in. Now comedy clubs half the time are free to get. In. You know, they just. They should have kept up with the movie theaters, and they didn't. And that's that's the problem. Because, yeah, I mean, as comics now, if, if it was the way, if, if, it, if it went the way it should have went, you know, every comic with his weight should be making $250,000 a year. But that's not the way it is. Yeah. The money has not changed at all. That's no, but economics have. You know, there's yeah. still inflation and everything else. But, you know, just the fact that someone like you or – you know, even guys that came, like, you know, not to brag on myself at all, but the fact that I started yeah. in the mid-90s when they're really, the only comedy stage to get on to practice was the Funny Bone having a yearly competition. You're right. Yeah. And so when, well, you, you know, know what? when you're talking about doing bar gigs, that's how I started, just for fucking yeah. fun. I would get on stage, and instead of doing karaoke, I would just do five minutes yeah. of stand-up and... That's how I learned to work the crowd initially. It was just yeah. a way to get their attention so I could go into my prepared material. And uh, that's I'm how I came I am up. impressed with the, how hard you work. I'm impressed with the, how many gigs you pick up. and how. I mean, it, it's just it's pretty amazing. You know, you should, I mean, in all reality, you, sh you should have your own comedy club. <laughs> but, I mean, and, and, and you could MC it every night, and, and, and you know, that would, that would take care of that part of you. But uh, you, you, you've definitely got a grasp on what this is all about. Well, thanks, man. And likewise, you know, it's like it was guys like you that way back in the day that gave me the encouragement. And you're probably you're just such a nice guy that you're probably just doing that just to be nice. But it, you know, at that time in that moment, it did mean something to me. So I really appreciate it, and I I appreciate you doing this with me. And you're gonna have a lot of fun this Friday up in Grettinger when you do the show at Birdie's Burgers and Brews. Insert more shameless promotion here. And um, <laughs> if you guys, if you can still find these anywhere. The Willie Farrell vintage comedy <laughs> tape from Laughing Hyena Records. Oh my God! And uh, <laughs> yeah. um, otherwise, uh, a show with Ben Eulen, another guy that helped me get started way back in the day when I was doing the dog costume gig 
and the Wild West comedy show out at Adventureland. The magician Ben Eulen, Willie's going to be working with him Friday, January 6th in Des Moines. Our old stomping grounds, my old stomping grounds, that's where Willie came up originally. And uh, that's going to be at the Forte Ballroom. That's January yeah. 6th, well, the magician Ben Eulen. So that's going to be a great time. January 26th, me and Ben, it will be a good time. It's a, it's a basically call it a corporate holiday thing. And what it is, it's a, you, get, you get a great big dinner, and uh, you get the, the, the two comics. It's 45 bucks a head. But if you got a small company, if you got a company with four or five people in there and you, you want to give them a Christmas show, a late Christmas show, or or any kind of show, um, you know, you bring them there, they get they get fed really well from Broadus and uh, uh, full dinners. And uh, me and Ben, it's, I think it's worth it. We've done them before, and they, they've always – They've always went well. That sounds it sounds like a hell of a deal, man. And yeah, uh, yeah forty five bucks a pop. You know you're going to get a kick ass crowd in there. Those are going to be a very appreciative audience. That's going to be that's yes. high class gig right there. Patty Ryan says, "Love my Willie." Oh, I love Patty. Patty, you know, well, Patty started with. Uh, uh, I don't know if you ever remember. Don't quit your day job. Um, it, well, I'll tell you who it is. It was the Higgins boys and Gruber. Uh, it was Dave Higgins, who was a regular on Malcolm in the Middle. He was a regular on the first Ellen show. He was a regular on uh, uh, Mike and Molly. Uh, and his brother, Steve Higgins, who is, if you watch Jimmy Fallon, he's the announcer. He's Ed McMahon. And uh, he also was the uh, head producer for uh, uh, Saturday Night Live for the last 15 years. Oh, right on. Dave Allen... Dave Allen uh, is uh, uh, he's every he's the he's the poor man's uh, Tommy Chong. Anytime they have a movie and they need a guy with a beard and looks really crazy, that's Dave Allen. He's in it. So all three of those guys have went on big. And Patty started with them uh, in Don't Quit Your Day Job a long time ago. So yeah, oh, right on. Full comedy veteran back in the day. Yes. Well, thanks, Patty, for checking out the 420 <laughs> report. Patty's a good girl. And Willie, thank you, man. We've been going on for almost 40 minutes now. That's 20 minutes longer than what you promised me, so I really appreciate it. Well, like I said, we'll do a part two, part three, part four, part five. We'll keep it going. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. And you know what? I want to do more shows with you. I think we could call it the Dog yeah. Father Comedy Tour. I like it. I like. Yeah, well, let's, let, you know what? If anybody can put it together, it's you. So let's do it. <laughs> the Dog Father Comedy Tour with Jared Dog and like Willie it. Farrell. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, shit. Well, well, and hey, dude, you know, I've been The Godfather came out on Netflix this week and I've been watching that. And I realized just how much back in the day I had a VHS tape and the only I only had two. I had a v, VCR and I only had two VHS tapes that I owned. One of them was The Godfather. The other one was Billy Madison. And I would just watch them in tandem <laughs> back and forth. That kind of explains you, doesn't it, Jared? <laughs> a little bit, a, l <laughs> a little bit, you know, like. Uh, there's so much that I learned that applies to comedy from The Godfather, you know, like, uh, you know, make an irresistible offer. I talked about this earlier in the week, you know, make them an offer they can't refuse. And that's something that I've always tried to do with the venues that I promote comedy at is make an offer that I don't mean fucking put a gun in their face and tell them that their brains will be on the contract if they don't sign it. But I mean, make an irresistible offer, something that is so appealing yeah. they can't say no to. And you know, along those lines, like people can go on my website and download my CD for free. When we promote the show, it's going to be a kick ass time. Time, every single time so if you guys are going to be in the northeast northwest iowa area grenger iowa here's a fucking offer you can't refuse get to birdies burgers and brews in grenger and check out willie farrell this friday night january 12th the grassroots comedy tour it's only 10 fucking dollars this is a 45 dollars show if you're going to go see him with magician ben Eulen in des moines you get it for only 10 bucks 10 dollars in grenger this friday the country club you're going to fucking love it. So, Willie, thank you very much, man. Anything else you want to throw out there to the watchers and listeners? Uh, no, just, uh, you know what? I like it. It's been nice. You know, I've, I've, as I've turned into an old man, it's nice to meet young guys like you, uh, like Billy Blank, Johnny Bush, uh, Josh, and Andy. And there's a lot of young comics out there, Dan Untham and stuff. And uh, it's, it's nice. I feel like I'm getting a second lease on life with you young guys. I like sitting and talking to you about comedy and uh, just about everything in general. It's just uh, keeping me young. So thanks. Well, and likewise, dude, thank you because, you know, coming on and doing this phone conversation with me, not only is it a good way to promote, but quite frankly, for selfish reasons, this was uh, me going to comedy class. They don't have comedy. Of, you know, you can't take comedy in college. So anytime I can get a chance and have a 30-minute uh, conversation with a 35-year vet like yourself, I really appreciate it, man. Andy Hartley says thanks for this. He says that this conversation should have been a pay-per-view. 
<laughs> Next time. Well, well, Willie Part 2. There we he's, go. he's probably just trying to kiss ass so he can get an opening spot with one of us. Oh, he, he's got a bunch of them coming up with me. So, yeah, he said, don't, Andy, don't worry. Right on. Well, hey, Willie, thanks a lot, man. I'll let you go. Thank you, Andy Hartley. Thank you, Ann Macy, for joining in. Everybody else, we had a lot of viewers on this one. Hit the share button. Cool. Hit the like button. I'm going to be back tomorrow at 4.20 p.m. or as close as possible with another live video blog. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow, but it'll be something fun and crazy and cool. Willie Farrell, thanks again. And everybody else, till tomorrow, dog bless America. Hey, That's buddy. it, man. Thank you. Thank you. That was cool, dude. I'm going to hang up now, but I really appreciate it. Yeah. And I'll, uh, did you get the info for the show?